From the very beginning, they rushed into battle in the most dangerous locations. As for them, the war had started long before February 2022. Right, y'all. Welcome back to coming to Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a video from United24. So we've checked out some videos from them before. They always do a great job by kind of giving us all the context and the background, as well as, you know, providing the translations, which always helps, especially being a Ukrainian media outlet. So this is about the top five Ukrainian units. So it lists off Azov, the third separate assault brigade, Kraken, the Magyar birds, which I don't know if I've seen videos about that. And then the Da Vinci Wolves, which I've seen videos about that that unit as well. So yeah, should be interesting. Again, United24 does a good job. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you guys about War Trace Workshop. So again, I'll put their Instagram down in the video description. But they do some very, very fantastic artwork using some debris from Ukraine. You can kind of see here, this is a 105 shell and then i also have some other stuff in the background there but yeah they do some some great stuff again it's all for a good cause they create this artwork and then they'll actually use that to support the ukrainian forces the money that they get from this artwork so just very very cool very well done and yeah just definitely go and check them out because they do some fantastic stuff they make some fantastic stuff and it's all for a good cause so yeah i'll put that link down in the video description definitely go and support them if you guys can but yeah, should be good. Let's check out the top five Ukrainian military units. We're not tired of war. We do not want a break. We want to get ours back, our land, our homes, and our families. Can you please wait here? Mm. When the third assault brigade all right we know position, these guys they engaged in their first combat encounter on the very first night which was the beginning of nearly continuous confrontations it was almost round the clock assaults lasting up to 12 hours at a time oh, the snow dude the guys operated without sleep the enemy was 15 20 meters away for months they defended the city against the Yes, yeah, so I think one of the biggest sources of exposure to the Ukrainian war and like the combat and the conditions was from the third assault brigade, like myself and a lot of other people included. I, I mean, we just saw all the videos. We saw all of the GoPro footage, the helmet cam of these guys doing their assaults. And you get a good pre appreciation for like what the conditions are like, but also how this is like a very modern peer to peer conflict. And this kind of footage, again, wasn't really that common pretty much in any other war or conflict having these many angles and again, just kind of showing it's this unfiltered and this violence being a peer to peer conflict. I'm in Russian forces. During the night, Miron could use up to two boxes of grenades. I constantly heard him on the radio saying, we need grenades, we need grenades. Among their notable yeah, missions been putting is in the work. defense of the so-called road of life which served as a lifeline for supplying the defenders. That was wild, dude. At one point, the Russians were entrenched near the road, but the regiment's fighters executed a swift attack, dislodging hmm. them from their positions. Jeez. We would move Such 10, close combat. stand down, and immediately they would hit the spot where we had just been. As soon as we moved a bit more, they would hit the previous spot again. They were constantly trying to knock us out with unguided missiles, 120 mm mines and grads. In early May, the leader hey. of the Wagner PMC, declared by the United States as a transnational criminal organization, acknowledged that the 72nd Brigade of the Russian Army had fled from its positions near Bakhmut. We have just Jeez, visited feel, our feels like so long ago. I've heard what is happening. Our army I mean, when this guy was even this alive. resulted in the loss of several kilometers of fortifications and half a thousand soldiers for the occupying forces. This is just one of the successful combat operations of the 3rd Assault Brigade. They stepped forward as volunteers to defend Ukraine on the first day. Among oh, yeah. them were the veterans of the legendary Azov. So they formed a territorial defense battalion, adopting the name of their former unit. For a period, Ukraine mm. witnessed the coexistence of two distinct Azov units, each operating independently and now having different designations. Within a matter of weeks, the battalion under... Yeah, I was never really sure how that kind of delineation happened. Um, I, I mean, of course, the the logos and stuff look pretty similar, but I guess you know, they're trying to transition a little bit. So maybe that's kind of how that started. But yeah, I, I don't know timeline wise when it happened. So that's kind of interesting to know. Went restructuring and emerged as a separate special forces regiment. 
In the following days, the newly formed unit, together with the 72nd Brigade, executed an ambush on a Russian tank regiment near Kiev. Jeez Louise, I didn't see that before. Revealed that the occupiers lost nearly an entire regiment. Over the next month, Dude. the new Azov, alongside allied units, successfully liberated crucial settlements surrounding Kiev, including Vasilkiv, Irpin, Bucha, Hostomel, and Moshchun. Hmm. In January 2023, the Special Operations Forces of the Volunteer Regiment officially became the third separate assault brigade within the armed forces, continuing their active okay, involvement word. in the most intense areas. The brigade comprises tank, artillery, air defense missile units, and is even equipped Jeez. with semi-improvised ground drones. What the heck is that? I thought that was a cl claymore on the back for a second. Interesting. And again, it's so crazy with all these different angles, kind of seeing them in combat, so also kind of out of combat, just, you know, testing out new equipment and, and stuff. And of course, just kind of seeing the weather around them changing throughout this. But yeah, it, it's crazy to think that there's just that many cameras, that much coverage. But it is kind of, again, it's awesome for us to kind of understand that, shed some light on it, and kind of get the word I out. I improvised ground drones armed with explosives. The brigade consists okay, of highly so motivated explosives? fighters, among whom are notable Ukrainian individuals. We have a very good team. Newcomers quickly become part of the team because we live like little families here now, so to speak. Nothing brings you closer together and nothing knits you tighter to each other than realizing you could die today. This is probably a very, very strong factor that brings us all together. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Talk about trauma bonding. Jeez. Dude, hearing the emotion in his voice. The people here are more conservative, I'd say. They're nationalists, they're patriots of their country, and they are ready to change this country for the better. Hmm. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting backdrop. Oh, dude. In under a year, this unit swiftly evolved from infantry oh, okay. trenches near huh. Kherson into a unique combat force, a company of attack drone pilots. No Added kidding. by an entrepreneur huh. and an Damn, official, dude, that's this wild. group of pilots has already destroyed hundreds of enemy armored vehicles. That's crazy. Again, this is like, they're really just kind of developing doctrine and tactics, having a whole unit based on these drones, having a bunch of different types of drones, seeing which drones are more effective against certain, you know, types of armor and stuff, and having, you know, a certain amount on standby to be able to be effective against a certain, you know, convoy or units. It's just kind of cool to see how they're shaping that right now, because obviously it's going to be something that people are going to mirror in the future. One well-equipped attack drone company is capable of destroying over a hundred enemy armored vehicles each month. And we have proved this by hmm. our example. I mean, I believe it, dude. The footage is out there. While initially the group created by Magyar did not have a single professional military or drone, the intensity of the war was such that on occasion his unit made 50 sorties per day. The result is an incredible Jeez. efficiency. For instance, in early June 2023, the group destroyed or damaged 35 enemy armored vehicles in just four days. Overall, they have destroyed more than one billion oh, dollars dude, okay. worth of enemy equipment. So they have all the IFVs or a lot of them. The FPV Seems like drones maybe now. Are one of the Magyar Bird's trump cards. However, they also have other vehicles in active service. Among these is the R-18, an octocopter developed by Ukrainian volunteers. It can Damn. lift ammunition weighing up to five kilograms, which it then drops on the enemy from a height of up to 300 meters. Detailed characteristics of the drone are not disclosed, but that it is known huge, that it man. can operate at a distance of up to four kilometers from the operator. That's scary. Spend about 40 minutes in the air. The unit's primary objectives include That's enemy detection, frontline patrolling, fire adjustment, and launching attacks. Magyar himself shortens this into his unit's oh, motto, it's, it's his name, huh? Stain. He recently <laughs> demonstrated how well these eyes work. Jeez. A Ukrainian drone showed one of the symbols of Donetsk, which has been occupied since 2014. The famous five-star Donbass oh, Arena clips. Stadium, which opened in 2009. As for the Sting, see for yourself.
<laughs> These fighters <are> also <laughs> Was that the actual audio? No shit. <laughs> we are actively training neural network with footage to detect and identify enemy personnel and equipment that remains hidden from the naked eye. Hmm. Our objective is for it to recognize helmet or machine gun outline. Like some AI stuff. In the meantime, the soldiers keep an eye on their screens to bring victory closer. Following the counteroffensive on Kherson, they fought for 110 days straight near Bakhmut. They can And again, when you consider you can't necessarily have like the air superiority as far as, you know, the aspect aspect of having helicopters or fixed wing, having air superiority in that regard. If you can just have a bunch of drones, you can still affect their formations, you can affect their positions, you can affect their armor. So it's kind of interesting to think like you don't necessarily need that air support in, you know, as far as like the fixed wing and helicopter, you can kind of supplement it with drones. And again, like where you draw the line as far as the efficacy, of course, like the drones aren't, they can't replace certain things and, you know, by, by all means, they're not going to. But it is kind of interesting to think that you can at least supplement it with drones. Continue to be an invisible terror from the skies for the enemy. These shots are wild, dude. This is the story of the Da Vinci Wolves, former volunteers who became one of the most formidable units of this war. Hmm. Eastern Ukraine. Cool name. Zaporizhia I wonder where it came from. In the south, Chernihi region in the very north. They're hundreds of kilometers apart, and they're also the hotspots where the Venture Wolves unit managed to fight during the very first month of the full-scale invasion. Hmm. From the very beginning, they rushed into battle in the most dangerous locations. As for them, the war had started long before February 2022. In 2014, Russia seized Ukrainian Crimea and launched a hybrid war in the east. The situation was yep. threatening. In response, thousands of volunteers stood up to defend their homeland, including a teenager named Dmitro Kutsubailo, who had just turned 18. He had neither combat experience nor served in the army, but his courage, motivation, and desire to learn hmm. quickly made him a leader. First, he led a squad. Oh, damn, okay. Yeah, again, like... The whole Crimea thing, just trying to think back on it. I know there was, of course, there was media coverage, but I mean, we didn't hear about it as much as I think we should have, you know, in the actual military, because I was in the Marine Corps still at the time. Um, but we didn't hear about it as much. And especially when you're talking about, again, these are kind of peer forces going against each other in this kind of smaller conflict for sure. But I mean, it's something that's, yeah, I think we should have at least paid a little more attention to at least what it meant geopolitically and stuff and then a company soon this unit was called the da vinci wolves all because of the call sign of the young commanding officer before the war Dmitry <laughs> Kutsubailo what's the context for that an artist video and studied at an arts high school in 2021 he became the youngest person to receive the highest national decoration the no hero kidding. of ukraine Holy Since shit. 2014, the That's Da Vinci Wolves have been fighting in some of the most intense battlegrounds, including Piski, Avdiivka, and Savur Mahila. After the full-scale hmm. invasion, the Da Vinci Wolves emerged as one of the most capable units. They were tasked with the most difficult assignments in different areas of the front line, including the famous Kharkiv counteroffensive and the liberation of yeah, Baladia, Kupiansk, and kupiansk Vuzlovy. Again, the footage from them is the wild. The Wolves were at the forefront of implementing truly modern warfare tactics. They were among the first to leverage commercial drones such as the DJI Mavic for reconnaissance and fire adjustment on the front line. No kidding, damn. Da Vinci himself that just ate that. stressed the, the need for terrain study and thorough planning, leading to the Wolves consistently having the lowest casualties among their peers. Really? Hmm. Most of the That's an interesting case study. was captured from the enemy. Initially, they only had 120 millimeter mortars, but they acquired heavier weapons through their battles. Hmm. Alina Mikhailova, the fiance of Da Vinci and the head of the Wolf's Medical Service, recalled it this way. Regrettably, we have not yet received any artillery systems. 
Though we repeatedly requested at least M777 howitzers. Instead, yeah. we are making use of captured equipment, so-called Lend Lease, from the Russians. In 2023, the Wolves have been performing combat okay. missions in the toughest areas, including defending the road of life, the only supply route to Bakhmut that is yeah. constantly under fire. Regrettably, it was there that one like the of the highway of death right of there. War occurred. On March 7th, 2023, 27-year-old Dmitro Kotsubaila da Vinci died while helping journalists and soldiers take cover during oh, no the shelling. Shit, dude. The injuries Damn. that da Vinci sustained during the attack proved fatal. His comrades Fuck, continued sucks. to carry on with this mission. Once artists, engineers, and teachers, they now serve as soldiers in a battalion with a legendary name that has become renowned worldwide. Da Vinci Wolves. Damn, that's a legacy though. For sure, leaving that behind. Release the Kraken! This okay. phrase found its second life thanks Should've to seen the where that was going. Unit which emerged from nowhere and became one of the fiercest at the front lines. Volunteers who started with regular cars a year ago now operate tanks as a separate reconnaissance unit. Weren't they like uh, sports Two fans or something? trained in the first day of the full-scale invasion as Kharkiv suffered massive bombardment. Large enemy columns approached the Ukrainian metropolis near the Russian border from the north. Under those circumstances, a group of gloomy men has gathered in Kharkiv. There were mainly local mm. football fans and their acquaintances. Yeah, Together, they stood up to defend the city. That's badass. Among them That's were such a cool officers, story. Veterans of the acclaimed Dazov and other experienced fighters. The main directorate of intelligence agreed to provide some light arms, a few machine guns and mortars. That's how Kraken was born. In mm. the second half of the day on February 24th, That's a very cool we story took our well, positions man. at North Saltivka the most dangerous direction at the time. They were already breaching through it. The 92nd Brigade was holding it, but the defense was already breached. That's where we sent the reinforcements to. A few days later, they were already dislodging Russian special... Again, like the interviews are, especially from like the people who were in the units and who were actually there. Again, it just helps a lot in kind of understanding what the situation was like when these guys were showing up because again showing up when it's already kind of contested environment goes to show a lot about the people who are in the unit but also what they're capable of as far as being able to kind of jump into that and also still be effective come out on top forces from a school they captured near the city center in a week two russian caliber missiles hit the city's defense headquarters where kraken was also dislocated according to the official report 29 people died Damn, dude. Yet the volunteers remained unwavering. By March, they reclaimed Vilhivka village. Further, in April, they liberated the important town of Ruska hmm. Lozova. As it was later revealed, some cool the shots. head of the main directorate of intelligence, Kirilla Budanov, took part in that operation as well. The army officials were so impressed by the mission that a spontaneous formation became a part of the main directorate of intelligence and received hmm. a new status a separate reconnaissance and sabotage unit Kraken. Hell yeah. In 2022, Keeping the identity of that too more is, than 20 is awesome. Ukrainian towns and villages. This number includes such big towns as Kupiansk and Balaklia. One of hmm. the main features of Kraken is a thorough preparation of every operation. For example, before the assault on Balaklia, Ukrainians learned that Russians lacked power generators. This is when Kraken <laughs> captured no the kidding. local power plant and turned the power right. off. Russians found themselves without yeah, connection cheeky, and electricity, dude. allowing the volunteers to successfully attack the panicking enemy. For effective operation planning, nice, well Kraken done. actively uses UAVs. That and that's also really cool how you can kind of hear the planning aspect as far as how they're going to engage the enemy, not necessarily just in, you know, combat with combat power, but also engaging things like those kind of peripherals or you know their energy. If you can cut off certain life support, then again, it's going to do a lot to them because now they're trying to react to this and they're not necessarily going to be as prepared to react to actual combat power at that point. Includes the Black Hornet, tiny helicopters that weigh around 20 grams. They're silent enough to approach a human at a one meter distance and remain undetected. Moscow they are really, really quiet. Kraken a dozen times. Destroyed? Well, maybe in the dreams of Russian <laughs> propagandists. 
Kraken keeps fighting in the hottest spots. Strict selection and high motivation to liberate their land made Kraken one of the most successful units of this war. Oh, Former dude, what football the heck? fans and volunteers That's cool. keep That's fighting. A cool shot. Release the Kraken. The time for vengeance has come. Again, it is just a cool symbol for a unit there. Okay, and we've seen a bunch about Azov and kind of their operations. Eminent unit of the Ukrainian army that defended Mariupol for months despite complete Russian encirclement. In May 2014, hmm. a group of volunteers formed a police battalion in the southeastern town of Berdyansk. It is named after police. the Azov Sea, which washes the southeast of Ukraine. In the beginning, this battalion counts 400 people. None of them are paid, most don't have combat experience, and nearly a half are students. Damn, what is that? They looks like a V-bed. And go by the call signs instead of names. All because most of them came from the east of Ukraine, often having relatives who live in the cities captured by the Russian proxies. No, it's After not, a okay. month of training, Azov advances toward the captured Mariupol, <laughs> engaging in urban combat. <laughs> Jesus. Motivated Azov recruits fight to their full power. In one day, Azov liberates the city that many of its members call home. Look a at that thing. That's the crazy. Full -scale invasion in That's some ingenuity right there. Russian troops have not achieved a single objective and suffered several painful defeats. Great merit in hmm. ruining Russia's plans belongs to Azov, which has Jeez, grown from a volunteer ass. battalion of police to the National Guard Brigade, one of the fiercest combat units of our time. In 2022, Russia planned to quickly capture the Azov Shore to form a land corridor to Crimea. It didn't go as planned, as the garrison of 4,500 hmm. defenders of Mariupol, half of which were from Azov, became an obstacle. Yeah, remember that, dude. That was wild. Hmm. It's got like a radio voice, dude. Eventually, Azov retreated yeah. to Europe's biggest metallurgical well plant, three times the size of New York's Central Park, the Azov Stahl. After a few months under the siege, Azov Stahl, named after the sea just like Azov Regiment, remained the only place in Mariupol with the Ukrainian flag waving above it. Dude, the that defenders was wild of Mariupol scene. ended up in Russian captivity. The Putin munitions they used. promised to save their lives, but it was another Russian lie. On the night of July 28th, an explosion happened in the Olenivka settlement prison, where Azov fighters were held. More mm. than 50 people died. In September 2022, 215 soldiers, including 108 Azov fighters, returned home after prisoner exchange. Commanders oh, of Azov were exchanged to 55 Russian soldiers. Oh, that's so cool. By an cool. agreement, Seeing they will that. stay in Turkey till the end of the war. The story of Azov continues. Just like back huh. in 2014, motivated fighters stand up to defend their country again. All this time, veterans and recruits keep fighting. Azov не повертається, Азов нікуди не зникав. Сюрприз. Ми весь цей час воювали. Навіть коли ми були в полоні, ОЗСП Азов воював. They continue fighting for their dream, the liberation of their homeland from the occupants. Що мотивує, що мотивує далі боротися? Тут, отсюда, 100 км до мого родного дому, до Маріуполя. It's hometown, man. Чуть-чуть, по чуть-чуть, ми йдемо вперед, я йду домой. Yeah, so solid video. Again, some of the details I, I had known before about some of these units, but again, when you can get like the interviews and stuff and also just provide some more context as to how these units relate to each other, it helps in kind of understanding it. And again, just seeing all the footage and stuff, understanding kind of where they were on the map, especially at what given time, gets us to really kind of appreciate what this unit has been through. And once you understand that, you can get an idea of like the resilience, but also what it means to volunteer for that specific unit, especially, you know, if you if your hometown was Mariupol and you have this unit that was trying so hard to kind of defend that, 
you might be a little bit more, you know, motivated to join that unit specifically. So kind of understanding where they've been and, you know, what they were comprised of initially, how they were formed. It's kind of interesting to see what kind of people might be motivated to move into that unit specifically or try and request or volunteer for that unit. But yeah, these are, again, we've seen all the footage. We kind of understand these guys have definitely been very, very busy. And again, this is just like five units. There's obviously countless units out there that are taking part. I mean, we've seen like with the 47th Mechanized Brigade, there's a lot of units out there that are also kind of in the thick of it, getting a lot done. Uh, just kind of what we're seeing from the videos. And, you know, there are, of course, units doing plenty and there might not necessarily be the same amount of media coverage as well or video coverage, but there's a lot of units out there. So it would be cool to kind of see more uh, as far as like understanding more background for some of these other units. So if you guys have any other units to recommend for us to check out on the channel, definitely throw that down below so we can go and look at those units as well. But again, this is kind of cool to give us a good summation of what these units have done so far in this war. But yeah, there's really no telling uh, kind of where it's going to keep going and what these units might find themselves doing in the future. But um, yeah, I'll be here and I'll be you know providing as much coverage as I can to be able to kind of spread that message and you know highlight some of those operations and some of those successes as well. But yeah, if you guys have anything to recommend, definitely let me know down in the comments section. But that is it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.